winning 17 14 last weekend at Northwestern while the Gophers lost 24 to 3 at Illinois and they've had trouble scoring offensively. In fact both teams expect to have trouble moving the ball against the opposing defense in today's game. The catalyst for the Gopher offense is quarterback Markel Fleetwood who's completing 52 percent of his passes but he's only thrown for one touchdown and has tossed two interceptions this season. Much like Hunter Fleetwood is a good running quarterback. We'll be back with the opening kickoff as the Boilermakers take on the Gophers at the Metrodome on the TV 18 Purdue replay. Chicken. Don't grill it. Don't frill it. Skillet. <laughs> with new Skillet Chicken Helper, turns your fresh chicken into a great tasting dinner that's a quick and easy winner. Try new Skillet Chicken Helper. May I help you? Sure, I'll have a cheeseburger, man. Cheeseburger macaroni? <laughs> That's our specialty. Hamburger Helper Cheeseburger Macaroni turns plain hamburger into a rich, cheesy meal. Hamburger Helper makes a great meal. It's time for a really big manager sale. Close out prices on all remaining new 91 Hondas. Factory incentives up to $1,300 on Toyota pickups. $5,000 savings on all Lincolns. Factory cash backs up to $2,000. Savings up to $3,000 on Cherokees. The hard-to-find Diamante at a special price. The four-door sedan, it's only $8,470. My managers have done it again. The best deals on the best cars in Lafayette. The Gophers won the toss and have elected to receive to start the ball game. Keswick joiner Chuck Rios and Antonio Carter await the kickoff from Purdue's Eric Brun. Gets into it from his own 35, a wobbly kick. Fielded on the far side by Joyner at the 10-yard line. He gets back to the 22, and he's taken down there. The Boilermaker making the tackle, 46, Kevin Strickland. Fleetwood leads the Gopher offense out onto the field. It's a relatively young unit, starting just four seniors. Fleetwood is a junior at quarterback. A sophomore, Mark Smith, and a senior, James King, are behind him in the backfield. The tight end is Pat Evans, number 89, also a senior. The wideouts are Joyner, a senior, and John Lewis, a sophomore. Fleetwood going to throw on first down and finds Mark Smith. And he has a big game from the 22 all the way up to the 40-yard line before he's taken down by Purdue cornerback Jimmy Young. The Boilers go with their normal starting unit on defense. Peyton Minner and Don Delvey at the outside backers. Jim Schwantz and Eric Beatty on the inside, the front three Frank Komet Jeff Scanina and Chris Burns and the deep four Tank Adams Rick Smith Pat Johnson and Young going in motion that's James King the pitch back to Mark Smith around the far side breaks one tackle and he gets up for a gain of about four Young makes the stop setting up a second and six as the Gophers come to the line they send two wide outs to the near side the wide side of the field one to the far and Smith, the big sophomore from New Orleans, gets up near midfield before Don Delvey trips him up. Smith came in averaging just under four yards a carry, 26 attempts, 105 yards. It's a third down one. Let's see if the Purdue defense is up to the task here. The Gophers go with a double tight end, bringing in number 88, David Burton. And up the middle for the first down, number 33, Rios. The sophomore from Little Canada, Minnesota, went to Roseville High School. As the Gophers off to a good start here, two first downs there at the Boilermaker 46. Minnesota has yet to score in the first quarter this season. There's Smith again, and he gets down inside the 40. Adams came over to make the stop, a gain of seven. The Gophers now with a second down and three. Tied in left. Fleetwood gives up the middle. There's Rios. Rios has enough for a first down. He's down to the Boilermaker 35-yard line. The inside linebacker, Schwanson Beatty, brought him down. Fleetwood on first and 10. Frank Komet breaks through. Fleetwood just runs right around him and gets away down the sideline, dives ahead, and they spot him inside the 25 and the 24 and it will be another Minnesota Gopher first down an 11 yard gain for Markel Fleetwood. He's a fourth year player a red shirt junior from Georgia. 
Now the Gophers in good position to get on the board here in the first quarter. Fleetwood to throw and finds the tight end Evans. Down to the Boilermaker 16 yard line. For Evans, his 11th catch of the year. A gain of seven on that play. Second and three from the 17. There's Rios, and there is yet another Minnesota first down. The Boilermakers unable to stop the Gophers, and now Purdue wants to take a timeout. With 11.03 to go here in the first quarter, Jim Coletto had to talk to the Boilermaker defense, and they're back out there. In motion, Mark Smith. Rios is the lone back, and he runs out of the backfield, takes the pass, and spins his way inside the 10-yard line. Only a gain of a yard on the play. And it appears to be second down and goal. There's Fleetwood. He's in for the touchdown. So Minnesota scores on the Boilermakers. The first time Minnesota scored in the first quarter all year. And it's also the first opponent's points the Boilermakers have given up in the first quarter. Minnesota goes 78 yards, 11 plays. And with Aaron Peetcorn on to attempt out of the hold of Scott Schaffner, Gophers look to make it 7 0 with 4.37 gone here in the first quarter. Peetcorn's kick is no good. A little bit this way, wide right. You wonder if that'll be a factor with 10.23 to go here in the first quarter. Purdue has yet to touch the ball, and they're down 6 0. Peetcorn now has it teed up. He is a junior from Austin, Texas. Kicks it deep. Earl Coleman, no chance to return it. Downs at eight yards deep in the end zone, and Purdue starts from its 20. Eric Hunter will be at quarterback. The Boilermakers will start Jeff Hill in the backfield along with Arlie Connors. Connors going over 100 yards last week at Northwestern. Tony Simmons starts at tight end on the near side. Scott Green at tight end on the far side. And Ernest Calloway splits wide to the top of your screen. Bob Dressel up over the ball. Here's the Boilers' first snap at the Metrodome. After a long count, Hill goes up the middle. He is met by Sean Lumpkin, number 26. The mainstay of that gopher defense, a gain of two. He's the strong safety. The Gophers start a lot of seniors on the defensive unit. Ben Williams, Dennis Capella, Gary Isaacson, Anthony Bryant, Joel Stats, and Andre Davis are your front seven. Russ Heath in the middle, a linebacker. He's number 91, Drinian Mays, Lumpkin, Andre Thaddeus, and Derek Fisher, the secondary, second and eight. I formation for the Boilers. Two wideouts in the game now. As Hill goes up the middle, spins his way up to near the 26, and again, Lumpkin is there. And after a gain of three, the Boilermakers now looking at a third and five. Hill, a sophomore from Cincinnati, Ohio. Galloway to the far side, Rodney Dennis to the near side for the Boilermakers in a passing situation. Play fake, Hunter with time, rifles it into triple coverage, and the pass intended for Callaway is incomplete. Thaddeus was there defending for the Gophers, and Purdue will now bring on the punting unit after they go three downs and out. The Minnesota defense has bent but not broken very often. Brune ready to punt from his own 11 yard line where he's standing. He's averaging 43 yards a kick. Robert Smith takes this one at the goal for 41, brings it up to around the 47, and there he is taken down by Pat Johnson. So Minnesota with great field position to start its second possession, leading six nothing here in the first quarter. 8.47 to go. 
Fleetwood had two receivers to the short side now brings one in motion up the middle Rios gets to midfield Jeff Scanina there to bring him down a gain of three setting up a second and seven Boilermakers still with their starting defense which was driven on 78 yards for the go for touchdown Fleetwood completes the pass on the near sideline to John Lewis and Lewis has a first down at the Boilermaker 38 yard line with Young coming up to make the stop from the corner. King is the fullback. Rios in at tailback. Little shovel pass and Rios caught the ball but Jeff Scanina dropped him in the backfield. A loss back to the 42 and Chris Burns is down for the Boilermakers. Denny Miller heading out onto the field. Burns a fifth year senior from Fort Wayne and Miller is looking at the knee. So while there's a break in the action, we'll take time out. The Gophers lead Purdue 6 0. We'll be back from the Metrodome after these messages. Listen. Grain oats and cinnamon make every O taste as good as it sounds. Listen to the sound of a whole other row. Apple cinnamon Cheerios. Listen. Before you choose a body shop, what about structural tolerances? Can they really return your car to pre-accident performance? Will your car look as good as new? Will the work be done at your convenience? If you don't know, you better get Mako. Weeknights at 7 on TV 18. As the Boilermaker training staff takes Burns off the field, it does not look good. He's putting no weight at all on his left foot. And Miller quickly examined Burns' left knee on the field. And he has had knee trouble before. James Cole in to replace him, number 94 on the Boilermaker defensive front. Cole, a redshirt freshman from Indianapolis. Fleetwood to throw, fakes, and he goes down. Frank Komet sacked him back at the Boilermaker 47-yard line, setting up now a third down. We'll call it 19 for the Gophers. This Purdue defense has been allowing just 138 yards on the ground and 181 through the air this season. You see number eight, Roman Batten coming in as a defensive back. As the Boilermakers anticipating the Gophers to put it up here. Double wide outs to the top of your screen and the tight end at the bottom. He stays in to block. Fleetwood throws a little screen to Rios. A couple blockers in front of him, but Batten fought through one of the blocks and then Beatty filled and stopped Rios way short of the first down. A gain of only five on the play. And Minnesota's punter comes in. Number 49, Dean Kaufman. Junior from Sauk Center, Minnesota, gets into the ball, and it comes down at the five-yard line and goes into the end zone as Callaway signaled for a fair catch. The Boilermakers will start from the 20 on the touchback. Hunter brings them to the line, green the tight end. Connors and Hill behind Hunter in the eye. First down, carry. Up the middle, Hill stopped at the line, fights his way ahead for a gain of about three on the play. Isaacson made the tackle for the Gophers. Purdue now looking at a second and seven. Get a long count. Just under six minutes to go here in the first quarter. Hill around the right side. Very near a first down. Needed to go past the 30. 
We'll see where they spot him. Just short. So now on third down and a foot, the Boilermakers go with the full house backfield and Connors easily has the first down out to the 31 running behind the right side of the Boilermaker offensive line. Derek Schmidt, Denny Chronopoulos, Elvin Caldwell, and Kevin Janiak, the Boilermaker guards and tackles. And on first and 10, Hill gets the call again. No, Hunter keeps it. And pump fakes. Now he's going to tuck it under and run. Red shirts all around him. But Eric Hunter able to make positive yardage out of a bad situation. And give him a gain on the play of seven before Lumpkin ran him out of bounds. Second and three boilers from their own 38. Up the middle, Connors, not much there. The Gopher stack him up, and then the pursuit comes and puts a couple extra hits on Arley. He only got two yards on that play. So now it's third down and one. The Boilers from their own 40. Here's Earl Coleman. Coleman across the 41, and that's enough for a first down. So the Boilermakers have run it at the Gophers and picked up two first downs, and they're controlling the clock now. After Minnesota drove well with its first possession, the Purdue defense came up with a big sack. Scanina and Komet doing the job. The officials are going to measure here, but there's no doubt that it's a first down for first Purdue. Down. The original line of scrimmage was the 20. They got to the 31, and now just beyond the 41. And now, the eighth play of the drive. Hunter rolls out. Lumpkin's chasing him. And he goes down. Lumpkin is the second leading tackler on the go for defense. He is a senior from Golden Valley, Minnesota. From the Purdue 44, the Boilers looking now to second and eight. Callaway comes in motion to join Rodney Dennis, split wide to the left of the formation. Hill up the middle. Good gain by Jeff Hill into Gopher territory. A gain of six. It'll be third down and one for Purdue. Robust T, two tight ends. In the short yardage situation. Hunter's going to keep it. And has the first down easily. Making the tackle for the Gophers was Bryant, number 95, Anthony Bryant, a 260-pound senior. So now from the Gopher 46. Split backs this time. And on a counter, there goes Connors. And Arlie Connors gets down inside the Gopher. 35 yard line. Davis and Joel Stats made the tackle, a flag down, and the indication face mask against the Gophers. Ron Winter, the referee for today's ball game, Jim Augustine, the umpire, Dennis Gottel is the linesman, the line judge, Wilson Jackson, Tom Bryan, the field judge, Glenn Fortine, the side judge. And Tom Herbert, the back judge. Now the Boilers have it first and 10 at the Minnesota 29. And up the middle, Connors, not much room, down to maybe the 27. Davis and Bryant again on the stop. As the first quarter is winding down, Minnesota scored first. Boilermakers. Now with their second offensive possession, trying to answer. Down 6-0, split backs again. Under a play fake, blitzes on, eludes he, throws over the middle. Rodney Dennis makes the catch inside the 20. He's hit immediately, but hangs on at the Gopher 17-yard line. Hunter's fastest point to number 81, Rodney Dennis. That's 
So for Rodney Dennis, his 13th catch of the year, he was tied with Callaway for the team lead in that department at 12. And as the first quarter comes to an end, the Boilermakers trail 6-0, but they are driving on Minnesota. Don't go away. The guys from Pop Secret tell me they have big news. They say their kernels pop up bigger, so they're lighter and fluffier. I say they even taste better. Pop Secret. Perfect popcorn is our passion. Chicken. Don't grill it. Don't frill it. Skillet! <laughs> With new Skillet Chicken Helper, turns your fresh chicken into a great tasting dinner that's a quick and easy winner. Try new Skillet Chicken Helper. This new water mattress by Strata has a money-back guarantee, and only Strata offers this individually adjustable support zone. A Strata water mattress is so comfortable you can sleep through almost anything. Aren't you glad you don't live in California? Strata, we're going to shake up the way you think about water beds or your money back. Aardvark Bedrooms, State Road 26 East, Lafayette, 448-4450. If you like nuts, you'll love clustered cereal. Clusters is the breakfast cereal with almonds, pecans, walnuts, and honey, crushed into little nut clusters and mixed with wheat and bran flakes. So if you like nuts, hey, you didn't pay. You'll love clustered cereal. Tired of loading the family into the car just to go to town to rent a video? Now Video Land delivers to Lafayette, West Lafayette, and Kokomo. That's right, don't put on your shoes, don't hunt down those car keys, just stay comfortable and call Video Land. Your Video Land rentals will be delivered to your home, your business, even your personal drive in theater. Have Video Land deliver your movies tonight in Lafayette, West Lafayette, and Kokomo. Video Land, the home of guaranteed movie rentals. Whoa! As we return on the Purdue replay, the Boilermakers have driven down to the Minnesota 16-yard line. Starting the second quarter of play, Purdue converting three of four on third down, all three in this drive after they went three downs and out their first possession. Connors tries the left side, trying to get wide. He doesn't get much. Leading the blocking for him, number 33, Houston Malden. Seeing his first action as a fullback for the Boilermakers. Now Hill is back in. Purdue looking now to second and ten. Long count, Hunter to throw. Looking into the end zone, Rodney Dennis had run an out cut at the goal line, and Hunter threw it too high. Now it's third down and 10. Callaway to the near side, Dennis to the far. With Connors and Hill split behind Hunter, who wants to take a timeout. Purdue's first timeout. And a pretty good timeout, really, with the situation as it is. The Boilermakers in great position on the Minnesota 16, but they do need to execute on this play. They're well within Joe O'Leary's field goal range, especially indoors on the carpet. Hunter over the middle. Dennis had it and dropped it on the goal line. Defending for the Gophers was Derek Fisher, junior from Miami, Florida. Now 33-yard field goal attempt by O'Leary to cut the lead in half out of George O'Gorick's hold. O'Leary gets it up, and it is good. A flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. And the call offside against the Gophers. And because the whistle or the penalty occurred before the snap, it's a dead ball foul, and the Boilermakers will have to kick it again. They're going to decline the penalty because O'Leary is on the left hash mark. 
and moving him in closer would only exacerbate his angle, make it tougher to repeat the kick. This one is up and wide to the right, no good. So the Boilermakers get a bad break after O'Leary kicked the field goal of 33 yards. Minnesota being offside made Purdue kick it again. And this time O'Leary missed it. Strickland in at linebacker on the near side, number 46. And he trips up Smith right at the line of scrimmage. So Kevin Strickland coming in along with Cole who replaced Burns who's out with the knee injury as the Boilermakers doing some substituting from their first 11 starting on defense here's Fleetwood on second and 10 and down he goes Scanina came in made him run around that gave Komet time to come in and drop him second sack of the game for Frank Komet third down 17 coming up for the Boilermaker for the uh, Gophers rather the ball resting on the Minnesota 13 yard line. Fleetwood to throw. Hangs it up. Evans the tight end has it. And despite the fact the Boilermakers had the extra defensive back in and back, Evans makes his second catch of the day and the Gophers have a first down. They're out at their own 40 yard line. Ball resting just beyond the stripe. Here's Smith. Not much running room. Komet grabbed him. Dropped him for a gain of two. Two tight ends now. One setback. Fleetwood the fake. Skanina's on him. Fleetwood lofts it. Incomplete. And he only had one receiver remotely in the area, but no flag down. Fleetwood hung it up over the Boilermaker bench. Now Rios goes up the middle on a third down and eight. Beatty stopped him after a gain of roughly five, so it'll be fourth down and three, and Kaufman was headed onto the field. Almost as Rios came down. Callaway fields the kick back inside his own 15. Jukes and jitters his way out past the 20. A return of eight. 40 yards on the punt. And with 10.46 to go in the half, the Boilermakers have another opportunity after coming up empty after a pretty solid drive when O'Leary's Second field goal attempt from 33 yards was wide after he made the first. Hunter to throw on first down way high over the middle intended for Tedman Brown, who was in for Dennis that time. Connors and Hill, the backfield. Hunter coming on the option, turns it upfield. And he can get to the 25-yard line, but that's all. Stats made the stop for the Gophers. Give Hunter a gain on the play of five. They spot him just past the 25. Third and five. Callaway in motion. Brown the wide out to the near side. Hunter throws over the middle, and he led Callaway too much. Coming up defending for the Gophers, 93, Andre Davis. But the pass was going to be incomplete. And now Brune will, back, will be back to kick again. Not much of a rush for the Gophers. Brune gets a pretty good kick away. Smith takes it back on his own 28 or so, and Malden coming down to make the stop after return of seven. A 45-yard punt that time by Eric Brune. The Gophers have it now with 9.42 to go in the half, leading 6-0. Fleetwood's going to keep. Komet dives, and he's just short of tripping him up in the backfield, and Fleetwood gains 
about five with Strickland coming over to make the stop. 41 Ryan Wilson also in defensively for the Boilermakers now at linebacker. Pass over the middle incomplete. 81 the intended receiver. Lewis Garrison a freshman from West Des Moines. Now on third and four. Smith running up the gut and he's close to a first down. There's a pile right at the orange marker. And it is a go for first down just beyond the Minnesota 46 yard line. Fleetwood to throw. The rush on again. He's got a man deep. Throws downfield and wide open. And going in for the touchdown is number 85, Paul Hopewell. But a flag is down back near the line of scrimmage. Good news for the Boilermakers, obviously as Ron Winter is bringing it back, calling holding against Minnesota. So the Boilers catch a break. They could ill afford to be down two touchdowns as the Gophers playing at home, not near a capacity crowd, but still this place can get loud. The crowd not into it right now. As Fleetwood drops on first and 28, the screen to Smith. Ryan Wilson and Strickland are both there to drop Mark Smith at the 34 yard line. Call it second down and 23. Here's Smith. A little bit of running room, but Tank Adams is able to tackle him well short of the first down. But the Gophers, with that first and long, have picked it up now, so they're just looking at a third down and 13. Fleetwood drops. Good rush by the Boilermakers. And he's going to have to run it. And Wilson knocks him out of bounds short of the first down. Fleetwood got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about all. The original line of scrimmage three yards further downfield so on fourth and 13 the punting unit is on again a high kick by Kaufman Callaway at his 17 runs it back to the 25 and Evans made the stop so with 633 to go here in the first half the Boilermakers will start first and 10 from their own 25 when we come back. The 1991 year in closeout is going on now at Twin City Dodge Chrysler Plymouth. So now's the time to take a look at the 91 Dodge Spirit or Plymouth Acclaim. Roomy, luxury, and loaded with equipment. We'll give you our year-end discount of $1,329 plus $1,500 manufacturer's cash back. All this for just $11,495. The right car for the right price right here at Twin City Dodge Chrysler Plymouth. Hi, I'm Terry Tincher. And I'm Susan Singer. We're back at Follett's Purdue Bookstore to check out the latest Purdue items. Follett's is stocked with loads of Purdue clothing. From sleepwear to fashionwear, look no further than Follett's. Follett's also has a complete selection of children's Purdue clothing. And for all fans, Follett's has sweats, t-shirts, hats, and jackets. Follett's also has beautiful rings, pins, and watches. For Purdue tailgate fun, pull into Follett's. So remember Follett's on your next game day. It's Purdue's game day center. Sure is packed up tonight, huh? Yeah, it must be eight to ten cars deep. Bank One, a bank that's become famous for innovation, asked its customers what they'd like to see from banks in the future. Thanks. Anything for you, sir? 
you have any 50s tonight? And while Bank One can't use every suggestion, there you go. we will do whatever it takes to please our customers. Within reason. Before you choose a body shop, can they deliver this kind of work at a price you're willing to pay? Have they repaired over five million cars? Will the work be done at your convenience? If you don't know, you better get Mako. The scoreboard tells the story here at the Metrodome, Minnesota, with a 6-0 lead on the strength of its opening drive of the game. Markel Fleetwood, a nine-yard touchdown run. And Purdue missing a 33-yard field goal by Joe O'Leary. The Boilers with a first and 10. On their own 25, Hunter rolling out, gets up to about the 29-yard line, maybe the 30. They're going to mark him down right at the 30. And it's a second and five. Hunter on the carry. Wide outs top and bottom. I formation, Connors in front of Jeff Hill. Here comes Hunter on the option to the short side. The pitch to Hill, and there he goes. The near sideline. He's at the 40, the 30. One man to beat back at the 20. And Lumpkin drags him down from behind at the 12-yard line. A 58-yard run by Jeff Hill, the longest of his career. And the Boilermakers in great position once more. Well, that big play could be a turning point. Here's Connors up the middle, and he loses the football and the signal quickly that the Gophers are on it. So the Boilermakers, who fumbled deep in Northwestern territory once last week, do it again here today. 93 Andre Davis comes off the field. The junior from Jacksonville, Florida, recovered the fumble. As Connors Gave it up at the 10 yard line. The Gophers recovered at the eight. Not great field position, but at least Purdue is still off the scoreboard. So Minnesota has to count itself lucky here. As we approach the five minute mark of the first half, Smith goes off the left side. And Robert Harden, 91 in the ball game now for Purdue on the defensive front, made the stop. Here's Fleetwood around the right side, and he has a lot of running room. He has a first down easily, and Pat Johnson runs him out in front of the Purdue bench. So what field position the Boilermaker offense was able to come up with before the fumble, the defense is now giving up as Minnesota now comfortably from its 28. Rios, not anything there. Tank Adams came in to stop him. Drop him for a loss on the play of about a yard. So now it's second and 11. Joyner is in along with Lewis. Both on the near sideline. Fleetwood a pump fake. Lewis was wide open and he dropped the ball at midfield. He and Joyner both came downfield next to one another. And Lewis wound up open but dropped the ball. Now it's third and 11 and Fleetwood to throw again. And this time he throws it behind Darren White. Number 47, a freshman from New Orleans. Young there defending, Kaufman on to punt. It's away another high kick. Callaway calls for the fair catch, makes it at the Purdue 28 yard line. Just over three and a half minutes to go in the first half now. We'll see if the Boilermakers with a pair of timeouts left. Actually, they only have one timeout left. You can try to mount some offense. Hunter with lots of time to throw, and Earl Coleman got his feet tangled up in the turf at the 30-yard line and dropped the ball. 
saw Coleman right before the ball arrived start to go down as his feet got caught up in the turf. This will be Purdue's last game on turf this season until the bucket game. They only have one more road game, and that's at Michigan, and the Wolverines have gone to natural grass. Here's the incompletion. Tedman Brown, the intended receiver, and Heath got a hand up and deflected it. Now on third and ten. The Boilers go with a split back. Double wide out set. Hunter to throw. Blitz coming all over the place and the pass incomplete intended for Callaway and a flag down. Looked like the flanker screened to Callaway. But Callaway needs to be behind the line of scrimmage for that to be a legal pass. And he was not behind the line of scrimmage when he touched the ball and Purdue called for an eligible man downfield. So the Gophers decline the penalty and Bruins on the kick. And he gets away a pretty good one this time. Driving Smith all the way back to his own 16 yard line. Looked like a clip back there. And George O'Gorick, the snapper with Print Decatur knocks Smith down. A 56 yard punt. And the clipping call now being assessed against the Gophers from the 18 yard line. It'll be half the distance to the goal line. The officials will mark it off inside Minnesota's 10. That's where they start out with just over three minutes to go in the half. John Bentley goes in motion. They give up the middle to Smith. Jim Schwantz makes the stop for Purdue. Purdue defense hoping it can turn the ball over quickly to the offense here as Purdue has had great field position after that big run by Jeff Hill. The Gophers have had to start their last two drives from inside their own 10 yard line. The pass to Hopewell out to the 25 yard line and that takes care of the field position. But there is a flag. This could help the Boilers. It is against the Gophers, another hold. Half the distance from the spot of the foul, and they, they move it now back inside the three-yard line. And now Fleetwood wants to talk it over with John Gutekunst on the Gopher sideline. See Delvey 44 back in on the Purdue defensive front. Cole and Harden will have to be playing uh, the rest of the game at tackle with Burns out with the knee injury. Here's the give and up the middle. Smith gets very little. Eric Beatty penetrates and trips him up. Again back to the five yard line. Sets up now third down and we'll call it 14 for Minnesota. They need to get to their own 20 for a first down. There goes Smith. Look out here. He's going to be very, very close to the first down. They said they had, they had to get to the 20. Actually, this is close enough for a measurement right here, just inside the 19. And by half the length of the football, the Gophers are out of the hole, have the first down at their own 19-yard line. Smith up the middle, nothing much there, as the Gophers appear content now to just let the clock wind down. Closing moments of the first half, Minnesota with a 6-0 lead. Fleetwood going to throw it, though. And the pass is caught out at the 31-yard line. Keswick Joyner making the catch. 
clock stops. They move the chains. First and 10 from the 31. Trips now to the near side. Fleetwood a pump fake. Has a man complete at the Purdue 45-yard line. The pass caught by number eight, John Bentley, the senior from Chicago Mount Carmel. And a big catch, a 24-yard gain. And the Gophers are in Purdue territory and now could be thinking field goal attempt. Fleetwood over the middle, the pass caught. Hope well, a gain of about five with Schwantz stopping his forward progress in Purdue territory at the 40-yard 40, 40 line. So the Gophers now take a timeout with nine seconds left. And Pete Korn's going to attempt what amounts to be a 57-yard field goal. The Boilermakers would like to block it. No way that will get close as the ball bounces into the end zone. And the Boilermakers now start from that line of scrimmage, the 40-yard line. Only three seconds left. Purdue going to run out of the eye. Hunter gives to Corey Rogers. Corey Rogers gets up to the 45-yard line. And Davis and Stats are there to take him down, but a penalty. Flag down on the play. And the indication here from Ron Winter is against the Gophers, which means the Boilermakers are going to get a free shot here as the half cannot end on a defensive penalty. Face mask for midfield now. Purdue with one last shot. Rodgers off the right side. Gains six down to the Gopher 43. Stats made the stop, and we'll be back with the first half stats as the Gophers lead at 6 0 here at the Metrodome at halftime. Some things are ingenious but simple. Other things are ingenious but very complicated, like your car and your car loan, I bet. Well, if you're ready to trade in the car, trade in the loan too for a simple interest auto loan from First Bank of Lafayette. You can get terms to fit your budget, and First Bank calculates the interest in a simple way that saves you money. Check us out first. We're First Bank of Lafayette, an equal opportunity lender, FDIC insured. Chicken. Takes time to grill it. Takes energy to frill it. Why not? Skillet! <laughs> Introducing new Skillet Chicken Helper. Just brown your fresh chicken, add our delicious sauce and side dishes, cook it, and look it. In less than 30 minutes, you've got a great tasting dinner that's a quick and easy winner. So don't bake it. <laughs> skillet! With new Skillet Chicken Helper. There's a body of water your body will love every night. One whose water supports your body in natural comfort and serenity. A body of water that warms you, leaving you refreshed and invigorated. A waterbed. Take this feeling to bed with you. See our complete line of bedrooms today at Aardvark Bedrooms, State Road 26 East, Lafayette. Before you choose a body shop, do they know where to look for hidden damage? What about unibody construction? Are they skilled in the latest technology? How about color matching? Can they deliver? If you don't know, you better get Mako. 6-0 Minnesota at halftime here at the Metrodome. The Gophers scoring on a 78-yard, 11-play drive after taking the opening kickoff. Markel Fleetwood, a nine-yard run. And Aaron Peepcorn missed the point after. Statistically, the Gophers have the edge in most categories. 13 first downs to 7 for the Boilers. 219 total yards for Minnesota to 147 for Purdue. Minnesota's run 40 plays to just 29 for the Boilers and obviously has the edge in time of possession, 18 minutes to just under 12 minutes. The real weakness in the Boilermaker offense has been the passing game. Hunter just one of nine for 12 yards. 
and several balls have been dropped. Jeff Hill with six carries for 78 yards, including the 58 yarder. But the next play, Arlie Connors fumbled on the Minnesota eight, and Joe O'Leary has also missed a field goal, or the Boilermakers would at least be even in this ball game. Purdue will have the option to take the second half kickoff when we come back to the Metrodome right after this. Even a four-time Super Bowl champion knows to stay in the game, it's important to get the nutrition of whole grain. These guys don't have it. Reedy's does. Made with 100% whole grain. So no matter what you're going for, better get your whole grain. Hey, Joe, you're going to come back for one more bowl? You better believe it. During Bill Andrews' 34th anniversary sale, we are offering all 1991 Oldsmobiles, all 1991 Mazda cars and trucks, all 1991 GMC trucks and vans for only $34 over at Invoice. And we have many selected 1992 models with the same offer, only $34 over at Invoice. Come for a test drive, free Coke and peanuts with on-the-lot financing. It's Bill Andrews' 34th anniversary sale, now at State Road 38 East Lafayette. <laughs> Starting October 13th, this is buried treasure, and this is your shovel. Tired of loading the family into the car just to go to town to rent a video? Now Video Land delivers to Lafayette, West Lafayette, and Kokomo. That's right, don't put on your shoes, don't hunt down those car keys, just stay comfortable and call Video Land. Your Video Land rentals will be delivered to your home, your business, even your personal drive-in theater. Have Videoland deliver your movies tonight in Lafayette, West Lafayette, and Kokomo. Videoland, the home of guaranteed movie rentals. Whoa! Purdue will have the ball to start the third quarter. Steve Korn moves in to kick it off from his own 35. And fielding it right on the sideline, touching the ball around the 11-yard line, Earl Coleman. Actually, they mark him at the 13. So Coleman with a mental lapse in the Boilermaker offense with Matt Pike coming in at quarterback will be starting deep in its own territory. Well, Pike with Hunter going one of nine in the first half, getting the call here. The freshman giving on first down to Corey Rogers, so one freshman to another, and Stats makes the stop after Rogers gains two. Pike one of two through the air so far this season. Simmons goes in motion on second and eight. Pike gonna throw it. Rifles the pass to Callaway, complete out across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Thaddeus made the stop, a gain of 16, and Pike hit Callaway on the slant very well. Pike didn't play at all last week at Northwestern. The Boilermakers definitely still in this ball game. And Jim Coletto apparently looking for a spark. And he sent the freshman in as the third quarter starts. His feet after getting. On the kick.
Purdue going to get pretty good field position. Oilers with a pretty good rush. Kaufman not a great kick. Callaway a fair catch. No, he didn't fair catch. He caught it at the 42 and returned it back to the 46. McClintock there on the tackle. So good field position now. This is the best field position that Pike has had this season to quarterback the Boilermaker offense. Here's Hill down the far sideline. First down at the Gopher 42-yard line. On first down, Jeff Hill gains 12 yards. So Purdue off it now, making a threat. The third time they have been in Minnesota territory this game. O'Connor stopped in the backfield. And he tripped him up, a loss of two. So now it's second down and 12. And the Gophers can load up for a pass. Boilers give the play fake. Pike hits Callaway down to the 35 yard line. Stopping him there, 13. Derek Fisher and a gain of nine. So it's now third down three. Split backs behind Matt Pike. Long count. He throws. There's Tedman Brown. First down at the Gopher 21 yard line. So Matt Pike has come out and fired the ball and has been on the mark, and the Boilermakers are on the march at the 21 of the Gophers. Connor's the tailback now. Gets the call. Grab him. Ben Williams, a defensive lineman from Belzons. Now on second and 10, Pike on the option, pitches back to Hill. Lumpkin strings it out well, though, and Hill only able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now the Boilers look at third and 10 from the 21. High formation. Gopher showing a blitz. Pike gets rid of it. Came up, put pressure on him. And O'Leary now to attempt a 37 yard field goal, 38 yarder. And a bad snap, flags down. O'Leary is tackled. Flags flew at the snap of the ball. And it's going to be on Purdue. So adding five, it's now a 43-yard kick. And that's just beyond O'Leary's range, the coaching staff obviously feels, because now Brune is coming on to kick. So the penalty, the first of the game against the Boilermakers, cost them a chance to cut the Minnesota lead. With the ball on the 26, you'd have to smell fake if you're the Gophers. Brune hangs it up at the goal line, and it's incomplete. Johnson and Young were both down there. Johnson wanted pass interference, but the Gophers get the ball back at the 26. If you like nuts, you'll love clustered cereal. Stop the barking. <laughs> Cluster cereal has almonds, pecans, walnuts, and honey crushed into little nut clusters and mixed with wheat and bran flakes. Mm. 
This is Mako's Ambassador Paint Service. Just $189. We professionally and give it a high-grade oven-baked enamel finish from over 7,000 colors. All backed in writing in over 400 centers coast to coast. Mako's Ambassador Paint Service. The best value for your money. Just $189. If you want high-quality work for this kind of price, you better get Mako. Well, Purdue's fake punt goes for naught, and Minnesota takes over with 7.08 to go here in the third quarter. The Gophers up 6-0 on first down. Mark Smith up the middle finds no running room at all. Jeff Scanina finds Mark Smith. He almost knew from the 26 on fourth down the Boilermakers were not going to have Brune kick, but it is too far for O'Leary, even inside on the carpet. On second down and 11, Smith tries the right side, and he picks up good yardage, a gain of eight before Strickland knocked him down. But the Purdue offense on the downside of midfield has sputtered today. Fleetwood gives to Smith again. Smith, this time, dances his way close to the first down marker, but he's not going to be able to have it at the 34-yard line. So Kaufman is on, and the Purdue defense does its job. Kaufman's kick away. Callaway from his 25. Gets back to the 31, and Seabree made that great fumble recovery on the gopher punt fumble makes the tackle on Callaway Purdue with 5 11 to go now in the third quarter see Eric Hunter standing on the sideline he's not even close to the coaching staff so you would assume that this is Matt Pike's game now to pull from the fire as the Boilers trail six nothing Mike to throw. Callaway's there. And the kid finds the flanker out at the 42 yard line. A gain of 13. Davis made the stop. First and 10 boilers. The ball between the 43 and 44 of Purdue. High backfield. Oh, Pike fumbled the snap, but it goes right to Jeff Hill. And Hill makes a positive gain out of a bad situation. Pike had that trouble with fumbling the snaps in his first appearance against Notre Dame two weeks ago. That time the Boilers got a break. Maybe they can capitalize. Off the right side, Arlie Connors. Not much room, two yards at best. And from the 49, it'll now be third down five, Purdue. Houston Malden was in blocking that time. Now it's Hill and Connor split in the backfield. Pike to throw. Finds his man, Tedman Brown, and he cuts between three gophers. Lumpkin hauls him down from behind, but not before Tedman Brown gets all the way down to the Minnesota 35-yard line. A first down, Purdue. Now it's Hill. Tripped in the backfield. He still falls ahead for a gain of about two. Williams was there for Minnesota to make the stop. But the Boilers now looking at a second and eight. Again, split backs. Pike going to run the option. And he's pulled down right at the line of scrimmage. Back, he lost the yard. 
there to stop him for the Gophers was number 48, William Collins, a sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina. On the draw, Connors up the middle, and he can only get down to the 32. On a third down nine, the Boilermakers go with the draw play to Arlie Connors. So now again, they're right at the edge of field goal range for O'Leary, and again, Brun is on to kick. But the element of surprise for the fake is gone. Brun's kicking from outside the 30. So his best hope here is to just go for the sideline. That's what he does. And he kicks it out of bounds at the 10-yard line, so an effective kick for Purdue. And the Gophers with just over a minute to go here. Fleetwood, starting from inside his own 10, gets out to around the 19, close to a first down. Matt Johnson dropped him there, but Fleetwood with a good game. Hopewell arguing with the officials. Nice getting off the field. That first down for the Gophers. Now Fleetwood running the option. Rios. And he gets up to around the 24-yard line. And there's a flag. So that moves Minnesota back now inside the 10 again. First and 21. The pass out in the near flat intended for Lewis was broken up. Good play by Jimmy Young for the Boilers. This will be the last play of the third quarter coming up for the Gophers. Second down, 21 from their own nine. Fleetwood to throw, Smith out of the backfield. Spins away, but he cannot escape Rick Smith's tackle, a loss of Maybe a yard back to the nine. That's the end of the they stop the clock. That's, That's the end of the quarter. It's run out. And the Gophers still hold that 6 nothing lead. We'll be back with the fourth quarter on the Purdue replay right after this. Hey, we'll grab the tiger by the tail. We got a huge inventory of new cars and trucks. So come to Hubbard GM Center where we'll sell you a car or truck for less. It's Harvest Value Days at Hubbard GM Center, Monticello. Save on 91 and 92 Chevrolets, Pontiacs, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs, Geos, and GMC trucks. Get a free pumpkin when you take a demonstration drive. Save now at Hubbard GM Center, where Dick Hubbard always says... And remember, we'll meet or beat any deal or give you the car. Do you tell me his symptoms? Are you taking any medication? Have you taken your temperature? Uh-huh, well, can you walk on it? I think you need to see a doctor as soon as possible. Sure, I'd be happy to refer you. Why does Ask a Nurse think it's so important to put registered nurses on the phone? Because it's your health that's on the line. Hello, Ask a Nurse, may I help you? For health information or help finding a doctor, call Ask a Nurse, your source for health care answers. John's having a wave and save sale at Layden's Furniture. That's right, while John's waving, you're saving. Save even more off the already low discount price if you carry away your own purchase. Save on such name brands as Lane, Flex Steel, and Bassett. Purchase three, four, five, or more rooms of fine home furnishings during this sale and save hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Credit terms available, plus 12 months free financing. Now is the time to hurry into Lane's Furniture for the best selection. And remember, while John's waving, you're saving. As we start the fourth quarter, the Gophers have it. Third down, 21 ball between their eight and nine yard line. Up six nothing, but Purdue has had great field position throughout the second half, but unable to put any points on the board. Fleetwood's gonna throw it, no he's gonna run. He eludes Beatty, but pulling him down from behind Peyton Minner, a gain of eight. And on fourth down, Kaufman will come on to punt. So the Purdue defense continues to do its job, and now it's up to Matt Pike to get the offense going. The kick to Callaway on the gopher side of midfield. He cuts down to the 43-yard line. 
a kick of only 32 yards and Purdue with 14 19 to go in the game has great field position. Mike comes in. You see Scott Hoffman near coach Galetto on the bench. But Hunter nowhere in the picture. He quarterbacked in the first half completed one pass. And Pike's gone the rest of the way. Out of the eye. Pike to throw over the middle to the tight end. And Green, Scott Green gets down to the 30 yard line. Inside the 30. A gain of 14. Oilers showed run motion and then hit the tight end. Here's Corey Rogers powering off the left side down to near the 25. Isaacson there to make the stop for the Gophers. It'll be second down seven Purdue. From the eye. Two receivers to the near side. Pike rolling this way. Hanging it up in the end zone and the pass incomplete, but a flag down. Tedman Brown guarded by number one, Andre Thaddeus. And it'll be a pass interference call against the Gophers. As he was obviously face guarding there in the back of the end zone as Tedman Brown was open. They move at half the distance. It's a first down Purdue from the Gopher 13 yard line. There's Hill. And he is upended, but gets down inside the five yard line. Fatty's made the stop, a gain of eight for Jeff Hill. Tony Simmons limped off. Ryan Grigson in now tied in. Here comes Rogers. The Gophers with a little bit of trouble getting the defensive unit on the field, but the Boilermakers run right into the teeth of the Gopher formation. Now it's third down three. Flag down. Pike's going to go down. Back at the 10 yard line. Bryant got in on him. The crowd into the game. We'll see what the flag is. Jim Coletto looking on. The Boilermakers, another critical error. Illegal shift the call against Purdue. The Gophers to climb it. O'Leary to attempt a 27 yard field goal. This one is up and it is good. So now it's six to three, but you look at the O'Leary missed field goal early in the game and that fumble recovered by the Gophers at their own eight. The Boilermakers should be leading here, but instead they're down six three. Plenty of time left though. Almost 12 minutes to go. Purdue's drive, 43 yards, five plays. Bruins kick comes down to the eight yard line. Rios returns it back across the 25 to the 28 yard line. And Houston Malden down there to make the stop. Here's Smith and Robert Harden is right there to meet him. Still a gain of about four on the play. Purdue defense wants to get the ball right back. The offense able to move the ball relatively well. There's a great hit by Pat Johnson. The sophomore from Mineral Point, Missouri, really stuck the tight end on the play, Pat Evans. Third down six. Gophers from their 42. Fleetwood back to throw. Now he's going to break contain and dive ahead for a first down at the 39 yard line. The 
boiler pass rush got caught up. Fleetwood able to get outside. Now it's King, the fullback, who started but hasn't touched the ball since the first quarter. Running up the middle. Minner brought him down. Gain of about four. From the 43. And the offensive left guard made a false move. Scott Hendrickson, a 275-pound junior from Tucson, Arizona, is going to be flagged. That will cost the Gophers five and make up a second and 11 situation now for Fleetwood. From his own 38 as he brings the Gophers up. Has two backs behind him. Wide outs left and right. Wide side of the field. Nearest you to the bottom of your screen. Fleetwood in trouble. Throws it away. The pass was nearly picked up by Eric Dalen, tied in. Fleetwood was nearly sacked. In the NFL, he would have been sacked in the grasp. Now on third and 11, he does go down with Scanina and Minner both around him. Fleetwood just took a dive. So the Purdue defense comes up again with a short possession by the Gophers. And you certainly feel the Boilermakers have the momentum here. The Boilers come after the punt. Kaufman gets it away. Callaway's going to let it roll, and it finally gets downed on the 33-yard line. 8.45 left to play in the game, and Purdue takes over on its own 33. Down now, just three points. Pike fakes the handoff to Hill. Now flush from the pocket. He finds Hill at the 40. So the completion gives the Boilermakers a second down and two. Pike showed pretty good poise there. To get out of the pocket. Still find a receiver and make an eight-yard gain out of a precarious situation. On second and two, another play fake. The pass batted in the air, and Lumpkin is there to intercept it. Rodney Dennis had it go right off his face. Should have caught the ball. And instead, the Gophers, with Lumpkin picking it off near midfield, have the ball back with 7.53 to go in the game. We'll take a break. The guys from Bob's Secret tell me they have big news. Bigger is better. This is news. Big kernels, they tell me. Pop Secret has these new kernels. Fellas, don't keep me in suspense. What does this mean? They say their kernels pop up bigger, so they're lighter and fluffier. I say they even taste better. And that's news. Pop Secret with new bigger kernels. Perfect popcorn is our passion. Call me anytime with news this big. Whoa! It's that time of year again. Cool, crisp autumn days and football. Why not load up the fans and follow your favorite team in a 91 luxury conversion van from Twin City Dodge Chrysler Plymouth? You'll find four to choose from, and boy, are they loaded. And right now, especially year in price with a $1,000 rebate, too. Say, tailgating's more fun in a 91 luxury conversion van. Come on, guys, let's head for the game. See them at Twin City Dodge Chrysler Plymouth. Back in the 70s, some people drove hundreds of miles for original Coors because it was only sold out west. I know, because we did it. That's me, and that's my buddy, Jeff, with his date for the evening. Here we are on Route 66. No air conditioning, no spare, no problem. Bingo. Tasted like it was fresh out of the Rockies. I can get original Coors at home now. Great trip, great beer. After Lumpkin's interception, the Boilermakers have been called for unnecessary roughness. The Gophers have it at the Purdue 28-yard line. This is Minnesota's best field position of the entire second half. They have the Boilers to thank for it. Here's Fleetwood. 
A pitch ahead to Smith down the far sideline. He's in for the touchdown. That looked like a forward pass. And the question whether Fleetwood was behind the line of scrimmage or not. Now they're going to bring it back and say that Smith stepped out of bounds. So fortunately for the Boilermakers, instead of a back-breaking touchdown, it's a gain on the play of only nine yards. Here's King. There's the football. He fumbled Purdue's on it. So the Boilermakers go tit for tat with turnovers, but instead of having the ball at midfield, they're back on their own 15. Fortunately, the defense bailed out the offense for that turnover and getting the ball back. The Boilermaker offense now starts at the 15-yard line. Plenty of time to go. Seven and a half minutes. Hill off the left side. Pass the 21 to the 22. Stats and Heath brought him down, but a good gain of seven yards. So the Purdue offense looking pretty solid when it executes. The give back to Corey Rogers, and he gets across the 25. That should be enough for a first down. Mike out of the eye, tied in on the near side. Long count, looks to be checking off and wants to call timeout. On a first down, Mike takes a timeout. Well, the Boilers certainly don't want to mess anything up here. They have left themselves very little margin for error, much as the same as last week at Northwestern. All carried by Rogers. Rogers carries. Gain seven. Thaddeus ran him out. Out second and three. There's Connors. And he gets up to the 35 yard line. He'll be just short. And Purdue goes to the robust tee. Connors tries to go over the top and didn't get much, if anything. Joel Stats stacked him up as he tried to go over the pile. And now Purdue's faced with a fourth down situation. Jim Coletto and Bobby Turner flanking Jeff Hill, who brings in the call. On fourth down, Coleman comes out, again from the robust tee. Mike calls the play. Mike's going to run it, fumbles the football. And who's on it? Purdue is on it. Mike was hit in the backfield and lost the football on fourth down. He may have fumbled it on purpose, knowing he was going down. In which case, the Boilermakers won't get the first down anyway. The ruling here is that they spot the ball where Pike fumbled it, not where it was recovered. Maybe you can hear the call. An offensive player cannot fumble the ball ahead and have it recovered by a teammate. As we now approach the four minute mark of the ball game, Minnesota has its second and seven, the ball at the Boilermaker 32 yard line. Double tight end set from the eye. Strickland offside, there's a flag. The pitch from Fleetwood goes outside. And Rios carries the ball 
down near the 25 yard line. But the flag will go against the Boilers as Strickland jumped. He was in the neutral zone at the snap. So Minnesota will take that instead of second and seven. Now the Gophers have second and two from the Purdue 27. And getting the call is Smith. Johnson and Adams brought him down, but the gain of seven for Smith is easily enough for a first down for Minnesota. So the Gophers now have it at the Purdue 20-yard line. And they are getting ready to put this game away. There goes Fleetwood. He stays in bounds. The clock continues to run. Fleetwood gained five. Komet brought him down. If you're Purdue, you certainly don't want to use what timeouts you have left now. You want to get a turnover if you can. Rios goes for two at the 15-yard line. He penetrates to about the 13, setting up now third down and three. A field goal here by the Gophers does nothing more than just take away Purdue's chance to tie with a field goal. The Boilermakers would be looking for a touchdown anyway to win it. Fleetwood throws in the end zone. Jimmy Young goes high to intercept it. Well, there's the turnover. So it's not over yet for the Boilermakers. We're just under two minutes. 1.54 to go, and Jimmy Young comes up with yet another interception. His fourth of the year. There you see it. Purdue has a pair of timeouts left. Pike to throw. The pass is caught. Green gains seven. Purdue's going to have to be in the hurry up offense, though. Pike calls out the play. The crowd, 31,000 plus, very quiet at this point. Pike to throw again. Corey Rogers catches it. Has enough for a first down. That stops the clock long enough to move the chains. Pike again. Out of the backfield. Rodgers again. This time he is stopped. Davis making the, the stop in the secondary. Along with stats. And Purdue's looking at a second and three from the 38. Like to throw again, Arlie Connors just did a matador with the ball. That stops the clock. Third down and three, though. The Boilers need to convert here. In all fairness to the quarterbacks, there have been a lot of drop passes. That time, though, Pike threw into a crowd, and Lumpkin knocked it down. So again, the Boilers faced with a fourth down in their own territory to try to keep some hopes alive of winning this ball game. Fourth and three from the 38. We're approaching the one minute mark in the game. The Gophers show blitz. Here they come. And Pike goes down, and that should be it. He's sacked by Williams, Ben Williams. Back at the 33 yard line. With 57 seconds to go. Minnesota can now run out the clock. Fleetwood around the right side. Tackled but stays in bounds. Jimmy Young helping out. That's a big interception by Young. And Purdue wants to take a timeout. If you're the Boilers, you could always hope for a fumble. But on second down and five, there's no reason to feel that Minnesota is going to do anything to jeopardize this win. Fleetwood sat on the ball, now it's third and five. A frustrating situation for the Boilermakers with numerous opportunities, a missed field goal, the fumble. 
several drop passes. And that will do it. So Minnesota goes to two and three on the year, one and one in the Big Ten. Identical record for the Boilermakers, one and one. And two and three. The players and coaches shake hands. We'll be back to wrap it up from the Metrodome right after this. This is Mako's Ambassador Paint Service. Just $189. We professionally prepare your car. We chemically clean it, surface sand it, and give it a high-grade oven-baked enamel finish from over 7,000 colors. All backed in writing at over 400 centers coast to coast. Mako's Ambassador Paint Service. The best value for your money. Just $189. If you want high-quality work for this kind of price, you better get Mako. Chicken. Don't grill it. Don't frill it. Skillet! <laughs> With new Skillet Chicken Helper, turns your fresh chicken into a great tasting dinner. It's a quick and easy winner. Try new Skillet Chicken Helper. Oh, what a meal for your family. Hamburger Helper Lasagna turns plain hamburger into a delicious Italian meal. Curly noodles, rich sauce. Hamburger Helper makes a great meal. -o. The Bluffs, located south of downtown on 4th Street, is perfect for short-term corporate leasing, transitional housing, and seasonal visitors. Totally furnished, tastefully decorated one-bedroom apartments feature everything you need for immediate occupancy. Unfurnished apartments are available as well. You'll enjoy the wooded settings with jogging trails, tennis courts, limited entrance access, pool, and year-round indoor whirlpool. Our office is open six days a week. I hope you'll stop in and become a part of the Bluffs community today. The Bluffs, Lafayette's distinctive apartment community. The Boilers leave the field a frustrated bunch after a 6-3 loss at the Metrodome to Minnesota. First quarter, Markel Fleetwood's nine-yard run, the only touchdown of the game. Minnesota missed the point after, led 6-0 until Joe O'Leary kicked the 27-yard field goal early in the fourth quarter, and that was it. Statistically, it's a relatively even game. Total yards and first downs, Purdue 16 first downs, 17 for the Gophers who had 292 total yards to 289 for Purdue. Individually in the game, Jeff Hill, 110 yards on 12 carries, including that big 58-yarder in the second quarter. Passing, Eric Hunter, one of nine for 12 yards, but Matt Pike, 10 of 15 for 108 yards. Be interesting to see which quarterback gets the call next weekend when the Boilermakers host Wisconsin. Markel Fleetwood, a pretty good day. 14 completions, 23 attempts for 119 yards. And running the football, 15 carries for 59 yards in the game's only touchdown. For Clayton Duffy, this is Paul Stouter. Thanks for being with us for the Purdue replay. And we hope to see you next week for homecoming at this same time on TV 18. This new water mattress by Strata has a money-back guarantee, and only Strata offers this individually adjustable support zone. A Strata water mattress is so comfortable you can sleep through almost anything. Aren't you glad you don't live in California? Strata, we're going to shake up the way you think about water beds or your money back. Aardvark Bedrooms, State Road 26 East, Lafayette, 448-4450. Tough, rugged, and reliable. You'll find it all in the Cummins Turbo Diesel here at Twin City Dodge. You'll find 10 pickups to choose from, all full-size and automatic, and equipped with air conditioning and five-speed transmission. Both two- and four-wheel drive available. Say, if you got some rough driving days ahead, come on in and see the Cummins Turbo Diesel right now at 91 closeout sale price. The right truck at the right price. The smart money is on Twin City Dodge. John's having a wave and save sale at Lanin's Furniture. That's right, while John's waving, you're saving. Save even more off the already low discount price if you carry away your own purchase. Save on such name brands as Lane, Flex Steel, and Bassett. Purchase three, four, five, or more rooms of fine home furnishings during this sale and save hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Credit terms available, plus 12 months free financing. Now is the time to hurry into Lanin's Furniture for the best selection. And remember, while John's waving, you're saving. WLFI-TV now concludes its telecast schedule for this day. Our studios are located at 2605 Jaeger Road in West Lafayette.
with transmitter near Rossville, Indiana. WLFI-TV and studio transmitter links WCZ-72 and KSI-69 are owned and operated by WLFI-TV Incorporated, Post Office Box 7018, Lafayette, Indiana, 47903. We transmit on 494 to 500 megahertz with an effective radiated power of 1,490,000 watts visual and 298,000 watts aura. WLFI-TV is a CBS television network affiliate. This is the seal of the National Association of Broadcasters. WLFI-TV is a subscriber to the standards and practices of the National Association of Broadcasters. The display of this seal represents WLFI-TV's pledge of community service and the maintenance of high standards of broadcasting. The entire staff and management of WLFI-TV bid you a pleasant good night and a good morning.